Hey guys, I'm starting up a new series where we're going to go hunt for good profitable strategies on the internet and on YouTube. And we're going to come back and we're going to code them into MQL. And I'll share the coding process so that you can also then see how the codes work and maybe learn from it as well if you want to. And through coding, we basically take out any subjective human element from the entire execution of the strategy. So when we run it, we know that we are following the rules 100%. The idea is we'll code over the next God knows how many weeks as many strategies as we can find on YouTube and hopefully some of them are going to turn out to be profitable and then we have a good EA. Now I assume that you understand a little bit of MQL coding. If not, then I have an, I'm going to create a separate playlist where I'll, where I'll in short videos talk about every separate function of, of what I use in my coding. But when I'm coding here, um, because I want the video to be less than 15 minutes, so I'll share the code, I'll quickly run through it, but I'll not go into detail. So anything you don't understand in the coding, uh, you'll probably find it in my other playlist where I, I, I speak about specific functions and how to do specific things in MQL. So check that out. Okay, so without further ado, the strategy that we're going to be starting with is called the Simple and Profitable Forex Scalping Strategy, and it's by Forex Signal TV. I'll leave the link in the description so you can go check out the entire video and understand the strategy. This, is, this video is about coding it. But to very quickly talk about it, it basically is one hour chart. One hour chart, you want the 8 EMA to be above 21 EMA, so you know the direction of the trend is in buy uh, direction. And then when you come to then you come to the five minute chart and then you basically want your 8 EMA to be above 13 EMA to be above 21 EMA. And then what you wait for is for the price to come back and touch the EMA 8 but without going below the EMA 21. If that happens, that's your trigger bar. You look five candles to the to the back and then whatever is the highest point, you basically set a stop order, buy a stop order three pips above. Your stop loss goes below three pips below the trigger candle and then your TP1 is 1 is to 1 and TP2 is 2 is to 1 ratio to your stop loss. The sell signal is going to be exactly the, the opposite. Now there's a variation where once the TP1 is hit you move the stop loss to break even and let the trade run. Uh, I'll put a second part where I'll code that as well but for this one I'll keep it simple and keep it to TP1 and TP2 without changing and moving to break even. That will be part 2. So, on to MetaTrader 5, we create a folder and we create a new year. Let's call it Simple Forex Scalp by Forex Signal. That's TV. Now, I'll pause the video and clean up the template. So now we've cleaned it up and we're left with three functions, the initialization function, the deinitialization function and on tick function. Now what these functions are, I'll put a separate video, go check it out, but I assume that you understand initialization is when you start the year, deinitialization is when you stop the year, and on tick is on every tick in MQL, the codes here are going to be run. First thing first, here are the rules of the strategy that I'm going to be coding. You can go again, check out the video on the, on the strategy. Uh, you can pause this video and read it if you want, but these are the rules that I'm going to be following. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, we're basically going to reference to this trade file trade.mqh which has all of these codes and it comes with mql uh, on trading operations so instead of writing all those trading operations ourselves we can just simply refer to that by saying include trade trade.mqh and then go okay well trade uh, c trade as trade and c position as position i'll create another video to then write uh, how this all works but these three are the most frequent trading operations that you're going to do in mql so i'm creating a c order or or, or or a class reference for trading operations for position infos for order infos the next thing we need is the handles for our emas and we're going to need five handles so one three for the five minute chart and I'm calling them EMA 13 and 21 on five minute and then on, two, on one hour chart we're going to need 8 and 21 and we need a variable to pass on the information from these handles into that indicator buffer I'll call, I'm calling it indicator buffer other variables that I'm going to need are going to be the five EMAs these are the handles but I will pass on the information to 
the variable EMA five minute eight, five minute 13, five minute 21, one hour eight and one hour 21 so that I can use them. And then to identify the EA, I will need an, uh, a magic number. I need lot size to open the trades. And I also want expiration bars because I don't want my orders to hang forever. So after these number of these many number of bars have lapsed, then cancel the order, which is basically on a five minute chart. If 12 candles, meaning if an hour, 60 minutes have passed, then basically cancel the order. Then on to then we go to our initialization function. And basically there on initialization, I want to set the magic number for the EA by using the trade.set export magic number function. Again, separate video on initialization and how to set up strategy numbers, uh, strategy expert magic numbers. Then I want to start the handles that we have created for EMA. And this we do by basically saying what these handles are. So the handle five minute EMA eight is basically a moving average on current symbol on five minute period eight bars to look back is starting at bar zero more EMA and price median meaning up uh, uh, high and low divided by two. Then for 13, we need to change the periods to 13 and 21. The time frame is five minutes still. And then for one hour, the time frame is one hour, but the period to look back is eight and 21. So this is how we assign functions to handles. Then as a good practice uh, on deinitialization, so when the EA stops, I want to release all of these handles. So indicator release and these five handles, I want to release them to, to free up the memory. And then on to the on tick function. Now, I don't want my codes to run on every tick. I want them to run whenever there is an, a new bar that opens. So below here, I'll define a function to check for if it's a new bar and it's a bool function. So it's going to return either a true or a false. I'll make a separate video on, on to explain these uh, codes, but you can just copy paste them in for now and they will work for you. So once I have that function, I can go to on tick and then I can just simply go It's like if it is not new bar and this symbol means not. If it's not new bar, then return. Basically return means exit the on tick. Don't run anything below. If it's not a new bar, just exit. Don't run anything below. So now I know everything below is only going to be run if it's a new bar. So now the first thing I want to do is assign the EMA values to my variables and I'll do it into a function and I'll call it assign EMA values. So when, if it's a new bar, then it will come here and then when it will trigger, then it's going to go and, <clears throat> and look at the function that I'm going to define here. So this is where I define the function then. And it's the function is called assign EMA values where I'm copy buffering when I'll make a separate video on copy buffer. But what I'm doing here is basically passing on the information from handle five EMA eight that we had defined before for five minute EMA eight into the variable that we had defined as indicator buffer. And then from indicator buffer, I'm passing on the value to the variable that I'm going to use as EMA five minutes eight period. I do it for all five. So now when my EMA values have been assigned, I still need a few more variables and assign them values before I can test for conditions. The first one is the open of the last bar through the op I open function. The low of the last bar, because I want to check whether the price was above or below on the last bar. The lowest, uh, the lowest point of the last five bars and the highest point of the last five bars, because that's going to help us set up the uh, the stop orders. Once I have these variables, now I can go and test for the buy condition. So here is my buy condition, which is basically that the EMA on five minute eight period is above the 13. And then on five minute chart, 13 is above the 21. And on one hour chart, eight EMA is above the 21 EMA. And then what I need is that the opening of the last candle was above the 8 EMA and the low of the last candle was below the 5 EMA, which basically means here that the opening was above the 8 and the low point was below. So then I can see that this is my trigger bar because it came from above and it touched the 8 EMA. And that the low, it did not go below the 21 EMA. 
And as a last part, I just check that there are no open orders and there are no open positions. So they are both less than one, so there's zero. If those conditions are met, then our conditions are met and we can go ahead and open the buy trade. In this we do, first what we need is we need to define the entry point and the entry point is going to be the highest point of the last five bars plus 30 pips. And this we have defined here. This is where we get the value of the last highest five bars. And we set up the entry to be above 30 uh, points or three pips. The stop loss goes the low of the last candle, which we have defined here, low of the last candle minus 30 points. Then the TP1 is going to be entry point plus the difference between the entry point and the stop loss so that we have one to one ratio and TP2 is going to be multiplied by two so that you have one to two ratio. And then I set the expiry time to be the start of this candle. And then whatever number of bars that I define, multiply by the number of period uh, or whatever time frame it is on. So by five period, convert it into seconds and then add it because MQL tracks time in seconds. And then we can open two trades, one with TP1 and one with TP2. So we basically use the trade function to say buy, well, send the buy stop with lot size 0.1 at entry that we have defined here with a stop loss in TP1 and then a stop loss in TP2. And because I want it to expire after a certain time, then I have to say order time is specified. Again, I'll make separate uh, video on how to explain all of this, but not here. If those are done, then this is our buy conditions to so open up the buy stops. So for the sell trade, it's just the reverse. which basically means that the EM8 is below 13 and 13 is below 21, 8 is below 21 on one hour chart, that our open was below the EM8 and it came above and then it didn't come up above 21 and that the order number, order totals and position totals are zero. Let's compile it to see if we have any errors. So we didn't get any errors, so the code is good to go. So let's test it. So here we start running the code and let's see, oh, I think there is one trade which opened on this candle, which is yes, because here the EMA 8 was above the EMA 13, which was above the EMA 21. And on one hour chart, the EMA 8 was above the EMA 21. And the price came from above on this candle and it came below the EMA 8. So it came below the EMA8, but it did not go below the EMA21. And this is why this was a trigger candle. And on, if this was a trigger candle, then we look for one, two, three, four, five candles below before. And then this is the top point, which is the high of 139. You will see it here, which is the 139.58. So we add three pips to it and we open up an order three pips above. We set the stop loss three pip below this and our TP is one above. And then if I go more, uh, it's difficult to see. Yeah, TP2 is set above here. So this looks like a good trade that the system opens. Now let's look for a sell trade. And here we, I'll pause the video here on this candle this one we got our sell trade open up or the sell order open up because it came above the 8 so the 8 was below the 13 was below the, the 21 and it came from above and it came below the 8 but did not go below the 21 and on one hour chart the 8 EMA was below the 21 so this was this one was our trigger candle and if I zoom out This one was our trigger candle. So there is a three pip below the stop order. There's three pip above the our trigger bar, the stop loss, and then the TP1 and TP2 based on one to one and one to one to ratio. So all of this works. You guys can code it now yourself as well and go run the test and see how does it perform. Well, until next time, and do leave some comments below if you want me to test a certain strategy, if you want me to code a certain strategy, let's do it together. Now, we are almost to the 15 minute point. So this is where I will stop the video. Um, good luck and until next time.